Good afternoon, cigar lovers. It's Tam here again, and welcome to another review hosted by CigarsIndia.in, India's largest and most trusted online retailer of cigars. And today, the boys have given me a challenge of reviewing these babies. This is the Rafael Gonzalez um, Petit Corona. And this is a box it comes in. Very nice box, box of 25. And this is uh, July 2014. And uh, they come in uh, looking, looking like this, which is very nice. They actually have a nice uh, marketing gimmick, you could say, at the front, uh, which I'll read to you a bit later. But uh, just thought I'd show you a picture of, or show you an image of, of the cigars themselves. On the cover of the box, it says uh, something very interesting. These cigars have been manufactured from a secret blend of pure Valeto, Valato Abeo tobacco selected by the Marquez Rafael Gonzalez, Grandi of Spain. For more than 20 years, this blend has existed. In order that the connoisseur may fully appreciate the perfect fragrance, they should be smoked either within one month of the date of shipment from Havana or should be carefully matured for about one year. Well, in our case, we're coming close to the one-year mark, so uh, it will take a month or two, it should be okay. Just pick out a cigar from this. Actually, it's got a very nice smell. Uh, very uh, tangy, actually. Very fruity and tangy kind of smell from the box. The cigar is actually constructed very well. There's uh, no issues about the construction. It's got a nice color to it. Uh, it's not veiny. It's, uh, is it on the slightly firmer side? No, it's, uh, it's kind of medium firm. So the draw should be okay. It should be a slightly firm draw, but uh, I don't think that should be a problem. This is a 42 by 5 and 1 8 ring, uh, sorry, 42 ring gauge by 5 and 1 8 uh, inches in length, and uh, it's a Pareo shape. Going by the smell and uh, just the pre light draw characteristics of the smoke, it smells very tangy, uh, but uh, it's not overpowering, it's quite uh, delicate uh, when compared to, say, some of the other uh, Cuban Vitolas. Pleasant nonetheless. I'm not getting too much of an aging on this as, as it was released in 2014. There's no kind of bookshelf, no leathery quality. It's just very tangy. Exceptional lighter. This is also available. And cigars in the abutting does the job beautifully. Initial views on this, it's uh, there's nothing spicy or peppery about this. The tan is gone. What I'm actually getting is a lot of uh, floral, uh, floral notes coming through. Again, it's a fine line, and if you check out my previous reviews, where I've commented on the fine line between something which is green or vegetal and floral, I think what we're trying to do is describe it and try and pinpoint that particular characteristic of, the, of that greenness, you could say. This is more floral. There's nothing uh, unpleasant about it. And unlike, say, the, uh, the Cohiba, which has that grassy, sweet grassiness or hay kind of quality, this certainly doesn't have, have that. This is much more uh, herbaceous. Okay, some of the spice is just picking up now. But again, it's a very toned down smoke uh, compared to some of the other Cuban uh, varieties. I'll just let that settle in and just go into a bit of a uh, history again on, on this particular Vitola of cigars. Now, for such an amazing um, description on the front of the box and also 
historically, uh, and I think they may still have these in the other uh, models from the, uh, the Rafael Gonzalez range, they actually had a picture of the, uh, the Earl of Lonsdale uh, on the lithograph, which was uh, uh, over here. Uh, that seems to have been replaced. The company wasn't actually, um, hasn't been around for that long a period when you compare it to, say, other Cuban marks. Uh, it was uh, founded in about 1928, and it was predominantly for the British market. Now, I don't know whether this is a sales or marketing gimmick, but according to legend, it was believed it was created, as it said in the, on, on the rubric of the box, by a Spanish aristocrat by the... Uh, uh, going by the title of the Marquez of uh, Rafael Gonzalez. And I, we, uh, the, the view is that that may actually just be a marketing gimmick, but uh, if, if uh, any of you uh, eagle-eyed uh, viewers may have some more information on that, then uh, that would certainly be appreciated if you could share it with us. But that's the view. It could have been founded by a, a Spanish nobleman, or it was just a marketing gimmick. Either way, it's a, it, the cigar was launched, and uh, it had a fairly steady history. Having said that, uh, after, after its inception in 1928, it was taken over between the 40s and the 50s, and it was part of uh, various other lines of cigars, which uh, I'll be going on to now. So it, w it had a steady rise up to uh, the revolution, the Cuban revolution, and pretty much in the 1960s, early 1960s, they were actually discontinued. And then again in 1965, they were resurrected, and they, became, they were resurrected by the Rey del Mondo uh, factory, and they were made as a sister brand to El Rey del Mondo cigars. So the interesting thing about this is it has shares some similar traits with the El Rey del Mondo cigars and perversely uh, the Monte Cristo range of cigars as well. So there are some profiles, taste and aroma profiles in the cigar, which are there's a sort of common gene between them, Monte Cristo and El Rey del Mondo. Now, it's more understandable if it was from El Rey del Mondo because it would have been part of the same factory or the same company which uh, would have uh, decided the flavor and character profile of the cigar. After that merger and during the 60s and 70s, this was generally regarded as a, as a, as a connoisseur cigar. It was always very much in demand. Production was always very limited and it was recommended by the great and the good. Uh, even uh, cigar aficionados like Zeno Davidoff recommended the Rafa Gonzalez as a connoisseur cigar smoke. Uh, the spice is picking up. The aroma is, is nice. It's very, again, kind of tangy. I, I don't really know how you can Unless you smoke the cigar and say, hmm, I just, I'm getting some kind of pungency, some kind of citrusy flavor, or aroma coming out of smoke. That's what I'm sort of getting with the smoke at the moment. And some of the spicy qualities have picked up, but still, compared to other cigars, it's very toned down. Now, I say that uh, it has picked up in terms of spice, but this shouldn't be viewed in the same context as the other cigars within this line. Uh, this particular Vitola actually has some unique characteristics which are not shared by the other uh, particular varieties in the Rafael Gonzalez range. Again, I'll be getting to that uh, further down the line, but for the moment I'll just uh, give this a few puffs and see how it settles. Okay, we're halfway, pretty much halfway through the cigar, and one thing I did discover was that this is a cigar that needs to be um, smoked fairly gently. Um, unfortunately, me being a very aggressive uh, smoker, I tend to puff on it quite frequently. That overheats it and uh, can produce a slightly harsher tone, which uh, I was experiencing. I've stopped that and just uh, give it a few moments to relax before I puff on it again. And I found that the subtle flavors are coming back. So the idea with this cigar being a you know 
gentle, uh, mild cigar or a beginner smoke, treat it with some respect as well. So I would suggest that you smoke it in a measured way, fairly slowly, and don't aggressively uh, puff away on it, because that always, uh, or through this experience, it, uh, I just got the harsh characteristics and none of the other pleasant subtle nuances which I was expecting. So, just to recap on the brand itself, it's, it's always been regarded as a high-end brand um, and all uh, totally handmade, uh, except for the uh, Panatella Extra, which I think is uh, partially uh, machine-made. Now, the characteristics generally of the, <coughs> excuse me, the Rafael Gonzalez, <coughs> excuse me, is that they, they are considered, uh, a, have a suave taste, they're certainly floral, they have uh, some herbal and mellow qualities, um, there is a woodiness to them and uh, some honey sweetness coming through, through, through them at some point. Now this perhaps may be the reason why I say there's a certain pang to it, but that could be the herbal qualities or the, 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 the woody notes blending with the sweetness coming from, that, uh, from the cigar itself. So this combination may produce that kind of tangy quality which I've just given a broad term to, but identifying it and breaking it down further, that they may be the actual um, inherent um, broken down qualities of it. A floral, herbal, uh, mellow woodiness uh, with a honey uh, sweetness coming through. Also with a mild tobacco uh, aftertaste coming through on that. And this is, I think, what differentiates it from the other Cuban Vitolas in that the, 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 the tobacco uh, characteristics are more pronounced. Here, in this particular brand of cigars, they tend to be less pronounced. So they're, they're, there is an opportunity for these other subtle flavors to actually come through. Uh, uh, in terms of aging, generally, the most, subtle, uh, the most of the flavorsome parts of the cigar um, come from cigars which have been aged for about uh, six years or so, five to six years. Um, again, as, as, the, uh, as the rubric on the, on the cigar box says, I just smoke it immediately because I've kept it very well at the start, give it one year, or ideally give it about five to six years because then some of the um, ammonias and other um, unpleasant characteristics where I described it in previous reviews of the period of sickness have kind of dissipated and uh, the better qualities of the cigars are actually exhi exhibiting themselves. Do a single puff and take it slowly and just let the subtle flavours come through. Now going on to this particular Vitola compared to the others in the range of Rafael Gonzalez, this is quite interesting because this is actually slightly more tannic than uh, the others in the range of uh, Rafael Gonzalez. Nevertheless, it does have uh, the characteristics of your typical Rafael Gonzalez uh, cigar. It's just a bit more potent than the other varieties. And I think um, this is where the aging is key because if you do get an unaged one or, or, a, or the cigar hasn't been aged for sufficiently long enough within those parameters, that may cloud your impression of the smoke in thinking that it's actually a very unpleasant smoke, which is not what it's meant to be and not the idea at all. Um, if you age it for that period or you smoke it within that one year or one month or five to six years, then it gives it an opportunity to express itself in the best way possible and all the subtle um, sweet flavours and uh, floral flavours actually come through rather than this harshness or um, pungent, unpleasant characteristics. In terms of strength, you're looking at about, uh, it's a three I'd say out of five, but again those were general uh, reviews, general uh, commentary on, on, on the strength of the cigar. I'd still say it was a bit milder than that. I'd probably give it about a two, one or a two out of, well, two out of five rather than a three out of five. Really, it depends on your own uh, taste preference and your, your own palate at the end of the day. If you like stronger cigars, this will seem much weaker than it actually is. 
if you're used to non-Cuban cigars or very mild smokes, then this would certainly seem a lot stronger. So it's uh, really up to you to decide. So in that way, I'd suggest you please try one of these and uh, uh, give it your own view. But I'd say between two and three. Okay, we've reached the final stage now, and uh, there hasn't been much more sort of variation in, 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 in the cigar. It's got a bit stronger. I've been forcing myself to smoke it gently rather than uh, puffing away on it aggressively, simply because the, the harsh characteristics were easily picked up on this, so turn it down. To sum up on the cigar, it is an amazing smoke, and it's a bit of a conundrum because some people say it's a good beginner's, novice smoke, and, but having said that, other commentators have said it's a good, uh, it's a connoisseur smoke. I think the only way to reconcile, is, reconcile it is to say, well, it's good for both. It, it encompasses uh, a lot of uh, characteristics which are appealing to the beginner as well as to the seasoned smoker. The appealing characteristics uh, for a novice smoker is that it, it, it's not too challenging. It, has those certain floral, woody, to, uh, slight toasted uh, tobacco characteristics, but they're not overpowering, so it's a gentle smoke, and that's why it's a good introduction. But because of that, and the subtleties and the nuances in the smoke, it's also very uh, appealing to an intermediate and a seasoned smoker, but depending on the time of the day, for me, this would be a good uh, mid-morning smoke. Uh, in fact, uh, you could actually, or personally, I could smoke this even without a meal on an empty stomach. It may get me a bit uh, sort of dizzy, but generally it, it, uh, it won't have too much of a deleterious effect on me. So it offers that range of choice. The price point on this is also very appealing. It's about 750 rupees. We have a few hundred more than some cheaper varieties, but what you're getting is a very sophisticated, very accomplished cigar. Um, so it's well worth that uh, few hundred rupees premium uh, on this, simply to enjoy the whole experience if you're new to cigar smoking. In terms of uh, uh, marks out of 10, um, as a seasoned smoker I'd give it about a 7, but as a, as a, a beginner I would give it about uh, an 8 and a half because it offers more if this is the first time you've actually smoked uh, any cigar, and this is your first cigar, it offers so much, but it helps you concentrate your uh, attention on the, on the cigar. It doesn't really need much accompaniment. It, it certainly wouldn't be a cigar during, uh, for, for afternoons or for evenings because the, it, it does have a delicate palate. Even though this one, this particular uh, model, is certainly uh, stronger, you could say, than the others within the range of Rafael Gonzalez. So I covered the price point, covered the, uh, the, the uh, marks out of 10. Um, all in all, a very good smoke. Uh, offers more to, a, to both a seasoned smoker and uh, to a beginner. Um, hope you like the review. Hope to see you again. Uh, please do uh, uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you have any constructive criticism or any comments that you'd like to raise, please feel free to do so. The uh, gentlemen at uh, cigarsindia.in also are on Facebook, so please give them a like on that, and they're also on Twitter. Once again, thank you for, for your time. Hope to see you again soon.